from the outside looking in, you, you probably could have landed a lot of different industries and businesses and you could have led marketing in a lot of ways. Now, you're, you're still in your, I think, first year at TripAdvisor, right? Yeah. So right. it's an interesting time to pick that category. So I just want to understand, yeah, kind of take us into that, you know, the time period of you kind of evaluating before you you go into TripAdvisor. What did you see there? The world is obviously changing and has been changing quite a bit the last couple of years. So yeah. what was your, yeah, was it, was there some hesitation and resistance? Like, man, am I, is this a, the right time for this? Was this just really well thought out? What was, take us through that moment before, before joining TripAdvisor. I, if you look at my career, I'm a career explorer. Um, I jump industries frequently. Um, I never been worked in the same job or industry twice. Um, so whether it's from like consulting, a startup, to media agency, to a media company, to creative agency, to tech company, um, I like to learn. Um, there are things I do that are transferable uh, with when it comes to leadership, when it comes to problem solving, when it comes to creativity. Um, and I find uh, I'm a better leader because I'm able to to figure out what worked well in maybe this one industry and how do I apply it to this other one. Um, I think that gives me a unique advantage than maybe someone who works in the same industry forever. I'm a middle child too, so I love to challenge myself. And when I get to a place where I set up my job and I feel like my team is stable and they're operationalized and they don't need me, I head down my next career exploration. So it takes a bold company to embrace someone who doesn't have 10, 20 years in their industry. Um, if you look at beauty, right, they're, they're all hiring people who come from their category. CPGs is another one and others. So one, um, TripAdvisor had a leadership team that is open um, to, if they realize that they, they want to change and grow, they want to bring in different people. Um, and I love that. I love companies. If if you embrace different uh, diversity of opinion, diversity of all type, that's the company I want to work for. Um, and on top of that, we're a company that's been grounded since the beginning in uh, connecting people. Um, so how can you not be for that? Uh, was I always passionate about travel? No. But what I learned about uh, I mean, who's not passionate about travel? But it wasn't like my career goal to work in this industry. But as I get older, you learn what's more important to you, and it's the ability to make an impact. It's the like, double a company. It's the ability to work with great people. And this was a company that for 22 years was had like one founder um, and built a large family-like culture. And it's the ability to um, uh, have a great story. And I think this industry is going to go through a renaissance, and um, I like to help paint it. What stoked the kind of the fire for you early on? Like, I mean, were your parents business oriented and entrepreneurial? Where did this begin for you? Because this it's clear that something, yeah, something triggered this this exploration, you know, spirit you have, and, and it certainly served you really well. But where, where where did that start? Where does that come from? Yeah, my my dad's an entrepreneur, um, so I think that's kind of in my DNA, and he always he he instilled upon me the opportunity, the rewards of being great. Um, for example, uh, in middle school, I really, I was loved Roberto Clemente. He was my favorite baseball player. Um, I grew up in Pittsburgh and I started collecting baseball cards, but I had no income. So he put me to work. I had a certain amount of pay I earned per different grades in school. So then I always got A's because I was trying to maximize my outcome. <laughs> certain amount for doing chores around the house. Um, and so I think that it didn't turn me into like a, like a rude capitalist. It, it turned me into someone who appreciated hard work for, for an outcome that they care about. And I also grew up in Pittsburgh in more of a blue collar ish like town. And, um, I learned the value of rolling up your sleeves and, um, leading by doing, um, and setting an example. Um, and so that's what really great entrepreneurs do, right? And building businesses. Um, and so I think that is kind of partly how I got into it. I also think in consulting, my first job, you know, as 21, 22 year old kid uh, sitting across the table from CEOs and they hire you because they have problems. And, and I was like, you know, you go back and you analyze it and you're like, I think I can, I think I could do this. I think I can, uh, um, and then when I went to go lead a startup, 
you realize a year later, as a kind of you know, you like a ret- retrospective on your uh, your where you are, you're like, oh shoot, I did that same thing that CEO did. I thought I would never do, right? <laughs> and it's like, oh, our strategy went off strategy because we followed the money. And it's like, wow. oh shoot, that was, uh, so you totally can see how it happens. Um, but I think you know, it's 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 just I love to build things. Um, and so, you know, I just, it's, you know, I just follow my passions and it's hard to explain, um, why, why you are who you are. Uh, but you, you know what you love and Mm. try to do more of that. This podcast is brought to you by Salesforce and the CMO club. The CMO club is a global community for senior marketing executives to come together, share ideas, and solve their toughest challenges in a collaborative and trusted environment with other marketing leaders. Salesforce and the CMO Club provide best-in-class programs, events, and a digital platform for marketing leaders to come together and be inspired like never before. Join our global community at thecmoclub.com.